Hello and welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to be taking on a puzzle by Blashirk, um called Center Clash. Uh, very short rules today. It's just a normal thermometer Sudoku. Nothing more complicated than that. Well, I say nothing more complicated. Actually, I have to explain just how complicated this might be in a moment or two. Um, but I will say the last time I did a Blashirk puzzle on the channel, it was very serendipitously timed because um, Blashirk had to go into hospital for a minor, a minor procedure and was sort of laid up in bed in the hospital and got a notification to say that the Cracking the Cryptic video that evening was one of his puzzles. Um, so he was able to watch it and, uh, and distract himself from, from the boredom uh, of, of just lying there. And no, that, uh, that made me feel good. That made me feel good. And um, anyway, th this puzzle is meant to be very clever indeed. I looked up on Logic Masters Germany. It's only got three stars out of five for difficulty. But a couple of the recommendations um, said that apparently this puzzle is impervious to computer solving. Um, and to demonstrate that, we got sent this. Now, I have to say, I cannot even tell whether this relates to this puzzle. <laughs> it's a load of gibberish um, about... So, so clearly a computer has been set loose, apparently on this puzzle. And the way the computer has solved it is using wings of various... I've never heard of any of these. I've heard of an X-wing, I've heard of a Y-wing, but I have not heard of a VWXYZ wing let alone a TUVWXYZ wing, let alone, get ready for this, an RSTUVWXYZ wing, um, a CNL, an a ALS I've vaguely heard of. That's something like, that's some sort of locked set, almost locked set. Um, but yeah, anyway, apparently computers can't, well, Let's be clear. Computers can solve it because what computers can solve any Sudoku that has a unique solution just by bashing numbers in, and you know they 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 can sort of iterate to a solution. But computers can't solve this with any elegant logic, and that's going to be our task today, or my task today, and your task if you're going to have a go at the puzzle. So it's quite. I I actually really like challenges like this because it makes me feel. Um, you know, it's a bit like in the world of chess. You know, I loved watching this, this, the speed championship over the weekend. Um, but in chess, you know, the fastest computer engines um, are a sort of way ahead of the human player. But still, human ingenuity has a role to play in chess. The, the whole idea of natural versus unnatural moves um, and, and the beauty of the game. And it's a bit like that in Sudoku, I think. Um, I, I, in fact, I would still argue that in Sudoku, human setters are, are ahead of the computer because the computers can't understand how to solve the puzzles in an elegant way. They may be able to solve them, but they don't understand how to do them elegantly. And what a challenge that would be for AI, hey? Um, anyway, anyway, I digress. What, 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 what else did I want to mention before we kick off and have a go at this? There were some things. I know I've got a birthday to do. Um, well, I, I tell you about our Patreon. It's our Sudoku club, basically. Um, that has got a competition running, as it always does, that starts on the first of every month. It's a Sudoku hunt, um, hunt themed, well, it's called Hollywood Lunchbox themed on um, famous sandwiches that have appeared in the movies and on TV over the years. Um, so a lot of sandwich Sudokus is getting some lovely comments. So do have a go. There's plenty of time left to enter the competition, which closes on the 20th. Um, now, there was probably something else I was meant to mention, but I can't remember what it is. Oh, yes. Now, when we do basic thermometer Sudoku, I say basic. There's probably nothing basic about this. But when we do thermometer Sudoku, if you do enjoy this puzzle, um, we have got a whole app full of Thermo Sudokus. The difference between our Sudokus and every other app out there is basically our Sudokus are all handmade by the world's best constructors. Um, so the puzzles are very, very beautiful. Um, 
and I'll try and remember to put a link on the screen in case you're interested. But anyway, let me read out the birthday. So happy birthday, Tara. Um, I know it's your birthday, Tara, because your dad, Clay, wrote to us and told us that not only is it your birthday today, but it's your two-year-old's birthday coming up later this month. And I believe um, Clay is expecting a granddaughter to arrive any day, which may be may even have happened already because Clay's email came in a few days ago. So Tara, I wish you all the best with that, obviously. I don't know if it's going to be a double celebration. I don't even know if you're allowed to have chocolate cake. You probably are. Um, but um, yeah, many happy returns. And um, apparently we've given your dad, Clay, uh, many a precious moment yelling at the TV. <laughs> um, that's all. Let's let's read the rules of Center Clash by Blashirk. Um They are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So we've got to put the digits one to nine once each in every row, every column, and every three by three box. And then we've got the thermometer rule. Digits along a thermometer increase from the bulb end. So if this square was a two, this square has to be more than two. It doesn't have to be three, so you can skip digits out. It's fine. Six, seven, we have to be a bit careful or we're going to... Can't, you can't obviously go beyond nine. So two, four, six, seven, eight, nine is a perfectly valid way to constitute a thermo. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Now, how long are these thermometers? One, two, three, four, five, six. And let me guess. Are they all six? I think, I think the last Blashirk puzzle I did had thermometers that were all the same length and maybe that was a minimalist puzzle and it had the lowest number of shortest thermometers you could ever put into a puzzle or something like that um now i know exactly what mr goodliff would do here <laughs> mr goodliff would take advantage sven software is great because if you get thermometers of the same length you can double click a set look if you double click that that somehow the software knows that all these thermometers are the same length and and therefore it would allow you to put the pencil marks into all the bulbs so what have we got here we've got how big can this be three four five six seven so we can we can make this four i think four five six seven eight nine yeah that makes sense if they're length then length six thermometers so what we could do is this Let's at least do this and then we can have a look at it. That really is a tremendously efficient way of filling. Now this is where it's going to be scary. Because if, if the com way the computer solves this is by using complicated wingy things that I don't understand. I suppose we're at a small advantage. Because what we can say is that we're not going to find sort of a hidden single in the puzzle. It's not like I can just write an eight into this square because, you know, because there's things looking at it that prevent it being the other digits. Because the computer would find that before it found the complicated wing things. Um, so... So, what is the idea here? The idea, we've got loads of high digits in the columns and loads of low digits in the rows. So, so if you put a high digit here, you have to put so if you put four here, you have to put nine here. Well, and eight there for that matter. I wonder whether, I wonder whether there's some reason the four bulbs have to be different numbers. Given that they've got four options. Um, this is not, I don't think this is the most intelligent way to go about this, actually. It's to just stare at it and try and... and 
try and think about it or try and think what the idea might be about the puzzle that that's probably not going to be sensible is it going to be set theory the answer to because because computers are quite bad at understanding set theory hmm. i don't really see how it could be set theory If, yeah, it feels like these squares are pressured to me. Those ones there. Um, just because I've got, I've got basically high digits in column four and basically low digits in row four all looking at this square. And the same is true for these positions. The geometry is very similar, isn't it? In the sense that all of the six length thermos, they all they all sort of have dominoes. They all have to, they all have dominoes in row four or row six that are low, and they all have dominoes in column four or column six that are high. Yeah, okay. So that is important. Right. So as so often, <laughs> as so often in variant Sudoku, I think that is a five. There we go. There's a digit. At least we've got a digit. I don't know. I don't know how quickly the computer got that digit, but I didn't need any wings to get that digit, I don't think. Well, I didn't. <laughs> I definitely didn't, because I don't know what any of the wings are. Uh, and the way I got that digit was very much more straightforward. Um, if you can see how to get that digit, um, brilliant. If, if, you're, if you're cross with me for being slow to get that digit, I'm, I apologise. Um, and if you want to try and get that digit and you haven't got it yet, do pause the video and give yourself a moment because it's actually, that's extremely pretty that you can write five in there. Um, and the way, I, the way I thought about that was I looked at these cells and I said to myself, where do they go in that column? And then I realised something. <laughs> I realised I, I, I can't put them in those squares, obviously, they're in the same box. And I can't put more than one of them there, because if I do, um, I'm going to have too many 5, 6s, 7s, 8s and 9s. So let's say I, I decided that two greens went there. Well now where am I going to put 1, 2, 3 and 4 in this box? I've only got three spaces, so that's not going to work. So I can put a maximum of one of them here, so I must put three of them there. But that logic, of course, is completely symmetrical. It's very, it's beautiful, actually. Um, so let's, I mean, we can do it. You can do it any way you want. Just look at those. Um, let's make those purple. Where do those digits go in row five? Well, the answer is I can put one of them maximum in there, not two. So I must put three of them there. And now this digit is purple and green. And I think the only digit that seems to have that quality in this puzzle is five. Isn't that pretty? That is a very, isn't it lovely as well, that I really, well, let's go back to that thing. The thing is, I don't really know how to even read this stuff. Let's try the TUV WXYZ wing. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in row four, column, row four, column three, four, six. Oh, no, no I can't even read this. I mean, it's just gibberish, isn't it? results in a three in or is that taking three as a candidate out minus three in row six row six column five it's doing something to row six it's doing something to that cell i mean that is not a cell i've given any consideration to at all so yeah it, <laughs> it's really funny um anyway what does that mean well actually i might restore my coloring because surely the corollary of this being the common digit between green and purple is that these digits are definitely low digits. So they are one, two, three, four. These digits are definitely high digits.
Um, now is so what I'm saying here is, and it doesn't matter. Yeah, the, the logic is very beautiful, actually. It's deeper than I'd understood because I can apply the perplification logic just as well. Let me show you. If I perplify those, can't I? I ask where those purple digits go in row five. Well, they can't be there. I can only put one of them in one of those three squares. So three of them go here. And what, the reason I'm quite excited about that is that I think that means that five, it, it, it appears in one of these squares and it appears in, well, no, actually some of those can't be five. So five appears in one of those squares and five appears in one of these squares. And the same is going to be true by green logic in the columns, isn't it? So maybe we get rid of the color now. Um, so five is going to be in one of those squares and five is in one of these squares. But the, mm, okay, and then the five has a weird, it has a differential effect in the sense that if the five, the five in the row causes the thermometer to be big. So imagine that's a five. Oh, my phone's buzzing. Um, oh gosh, I don't know. Um, I can't deal with that now. If this is a five, this thermo must go six, seven, eight, nine. If this is a five, this thermo goes six, seven, eight, nine. So one of these is a six. One of these is a seven. I mean, this is an appalling pencil mark, but hopefully, hopefully it gives you an idea. The same will, be, oh. oh, no, that doesn't, well, that's more complicated. Oh, well, no, not, I suppose one of these is a six. One of these is going to be a seven. And these are going to, well, whichever one of these is seven is going to have an eight, nine on the tips of its thermo. But then, but then in the columns, it goes the other way around, doesn't it? Because whichever one of these is five is a very, it's quite a modest digit that's quite a long way up a thermo. So that thermo is going to, is going to go backwards. Yeah, imagine that's a five. This goes four, three, two, one. And if that's a five, this goes four, three, two, one. So, so I, <laughs> I'm not sure about what I was about to say then. I need to think about this. So if this is a five, I think that is fair. Yeah, okay, let's use colouring to just prove this to ourselves. If this is 5, then this is 8, 9, which means the 5 in this box is here. Which means this is 1, 2. It means this is 5. So if that's 5, we're saying that's 5. So this can't be 5, so that's 5. So this can't be five, so that's five. And then what we're going to have is, we're gonna have high digits here, and low digits here, and low digits here. Yeah, okay, so it is, I don't know how easy this is to see, but what I can now see is I'm always going to have a one, two pair in a low domino, depending on where the five goes. So if we do the other positions for five, so we started off with this being five. If this is five on the other hand, then we can see this is, these are two massive digits. So the five in these four squares has to go there, which means these are two low digits. So this isn't five, so that's five. 
So these are two massive digits, so this can't be 5, so that's 5. And then these will be low digits again. So, so what I'm seeing there is that actually these squares and these squares are 2, 5. They can only be 2 or 5, because if that's 5, the effect of the 5s going around the sort of wheel of the puzzle forces this to be a 2, 1 pair. And if this is 5, this is a 2, 1 pair. And that there's going to be other effects on, on the, the whole... I think the whole thermos are going to be... Are going, they're not going to have many options. Because once you put 5 on a thermo anywhere, it's going to determine either the up... the way the thermo moves up from the 5, or the way the thermo moves down from the 5. The 5 is the crucial digit. So if we... If we try and take that forward, these squares are a 2-5 pair, which means these are not 2s. These are not 5s. But I... Hmm. Yeah, this square, this square here can only be 3 or 6. Because if, 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 if this is 5, this is 6, otherwise this gets too big. And if this isn't 5, then we know that the 5 in this box is the purple one. Sorry, if this isn't 5, yeah, we know we're in purple 5 land. And then this will be 3. So this is 3 or 6. And that logic must extend. Now, it must work the same here. These squares must be a 2 or a 5. These squares must be a 3 or a 6. And these squares, I think, must be 4 or 7. If that's the 5, that's a 4. And if that's the 5, that's a 7. Yeah, that's totally obvious. Sorry, I was being slow. Um, so this square is 5 or 8 by that logic. This square is 5 or 8 by that logic. Oh, and then, okay, then it gets a little bit more complicated because obviously whichever one of these is 8 is going to have a 9 on its tip. But whichever one of these is 5 has a very different... That could that could have anything. Well, not 8, not 8, I suppose, because these are a 5-8 pair. Oh, this is fascinating. <laughs> it's absolutely fascinating. Now, okay, let's extend that logic down here. This must be 4 or 7. This must be 5 or 8. These must include a 9, don't include an 8. One of these is going to be a 1, because it's going to be lower than the 2 that sits in one of these squares. The same is true here. These can't include 2. One of them must be 1. Two. Yeah, oh, I see. Okay, so in the middle box, where do 1 and 2 go? And the answer is in these positions by Sudoku now. And presumably that's going to be symmetrical with 8 and 9 in the column. This is lovely. So these squares are 3, 4, 6 and 7. And... And... <laughs> and... What does that mean? That can't be a 3, because there's a 3, 6 in its column. That can't be a 4, because there's a 4, 7 in its column. Yeah, we're going to have to go around the grid being very careful to sort of trace this through. That one is going to be... Ah, no, 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 no. That's got to be a 4 or a 7. Ah, which takes 4 out of that one. Oh... Ah, uh, yeah, 3-6 pair in row 3 takes a 6 out of this one. Okay, 3-6 pair takes a 3 out of this one. So There's so much symmetry. 4-7. Oh, I, can, I, can, I think I can dispense with my funny 6 pencil marks now and my funny 7 pencil marks because they're going to be confusing in the extreme can I get do I want to get rid of the five pencil marks maybe not because five is clearly the key 
the key to the highway, isn't it? Oh, there's a fly. Go away, fly. That's disturbing me. Um, I've st I still actually have only got one digit, though. So, how do we do this? <laughs> um, it feels awfully symmetrical, doesn't it? So, if that's five, this is nine. That's a 2-1 pair. Oh, well, that, that... I didn't like that, actually. I didn't think that worked. Why didn't I think that worked? Something to do with 3. If that's 5, 2-1... 3, 5... Yeah, that doesn't work, but it's really weird why it doesn't work. So all, all I did was I, I just pontificated that this was 5. And I know that when you put 5 in to an orange digit, in, in rows 4 and 6, the other thermo has a 2-1 pair on it. So if I made that 5, that was a 2-1 pair. And that seemed to make that a 3 and that a 5. But then that's a 2-1 pair, which makes that a 3. So I get 3s in those squares, and that won't work, because now I can't put 3 in that box. So how do you see that? How is that? How is... I mean, that's, that's what we call a Simon wing. Um, why? How am I meant to see that in a different way? So, <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, well, so, which way doesn't work? This being 5 doesn't work. The corollary of that being 5. So, maybe it's more... Maybe there's some sort of reason we can't have this being a 2-1 pair. I mean, it's the same thing. If that's a 2... Uh, Yes, okay, that's a that's actually a much easier way of seeing it, to me at least. Rather than focusing on this digit, um, we know that each of these, uh, one of those dominoes is a 2-1 pair, one of these dominoes is a 2-1 pair. If this is a 2-1 pair, I can, Im well, in fact, it's simpler. If that's a 1, both of those squares is a 3, and that's impossible. It's that simple. You just look at that digit. So you don't have to look at that digit. It's beautiful. You just look at that digit and you note it can't be one because both of those would be three. Isn't that gorgeous? Yes, is the answer. So this, well, the corollary is that this square has to be two. And this square has to be four. We've just worked out. So let's make that four. That means that's five. So all of the purples are five. All of the Oranges are, are the digit that isn't five in their respective positions. <laughs> We're going to get some things done here, aren't we? Six, seven, eight, nine on this thermo. So these, this one goes downwards. Um, that one can't be one. That one, we must be able to get that. Yeah, that's a one. It's lower than a two on a thermo. So that goes three, four, seven, apparently. Six. Five, six, seven. Yeah, are, we, are all the thermos going to get solved here? Possibly. Um, uh, I don't know, actually. I can't quite see how to do this one. Yes, I can. Where's seven in the middle box? And I don't know the answer. I don't think I do anyway, but it's in one of those squares, looking at this square. So that's a six which means 6 is not in those squares. So 6 is in one of these squares by logic. 6 is in one of those squares by logic. Um, 4 is not in these squares. So 4 is in one... Yeah, so 4 is in one of those squares. There is quite a lot of symmetry here. That's 3 now. I've now done all the... <laughs> oh, these can't be 3s. So these are all reduced to... 
um, sort of pairs. Three is in one of those squares. Four is in one of these squares. Oh, where's three in column three is a good question because it can't go there. So it's got to go there. So that's a three. So three is in one of those two squares by Sudoku. I would absolutely, oh, that's a three. So that's a four, just unwinding pencil marks. So that's a four and that's a six. Oh, this could, please, if this collapses, I will just be absolutely delighted because it's the sort of thing I, I don't know why really I, it just really appeals to me that you can have a puzzle with such beautiful logic that a computer can only understand in the most abstract way and yet look that's a three and yet a human being can still find still work out how to do it I'm going to make that purple <laughs> I'm going to get rid of my orange now because that's going to confuse me because orange just seems to have to be two different numbers. Um, can I... I'm just going to double click my threes because I seem to be doing very well with threes. I have got seven three. Oh, I see. I've got a little X-wing of threes left to place. Let's try fours because they were, they were being well behaved, weren't they? Yeah. No, nearly. Four is in one of those two squares. Um, bobbins. No, okay. So maybe that's not how to do it. Let's try, let's try something else. What could we do here? Seven, we can pencil mark up there. Um... I'm not really sure exactly where to look now. I suspect it's possible to get those digits to cascade if I just focus on the right number because the way that the the threes worked was really very exciting. One, two, six, nine. Oh, where's six in row eight is a nice question. That gets me another digit, which gets me another digit. That is a big digit because that's getting me that digit and that is doing things in the middle box that are very pretty. That's all my threes done. I've just got all the threes done in the puzzle. This is an eight or a nine by Sudoku in the row. Um, that can't be a four anymore by Sudoku. That's a four, that's a four. Here we go. We've done all the fours. All the fours are done. Um, sixes. Let's go back to those. Um, mm, oh, no. Oh, no. They aren't, they aren't done. There's six in one of those. There's six in one of these, I think. Oh, but no. Where's seven in that box? That, that's very simple. So seven and six go in. Six goes here, seven goes here. This is sensational. It is a sensational puzzle. Um, where is, well, what's that digit? Oh, one or two. One, two, and seven into these squares. Ah, no, okay, maybe not that then. Um, seven in box six, where does it go? There. So these must be eight and nine. I've got funny eights and nines everywhere. How many sevens have I got? Lots. Can I get all of them? Maybe. Yes, maybe I can. Uh, yes, I can. Um, okay, so it's, it's, it's going to be the ones, twos, eights and nines, I think, that are going to be the recalcitrant digits. No, where's two in row eight? That's a perfectly reasonable question. Can't go there or there, so it goes there. Two is in one of those squares. These squares are one and nine. Uh, what's the... Maybe five then. 
Yeah, that's not bad. Where's 5 in box 9? One of those squares. Where's 5 in box 3? There. By Sudoku. So that's 5. This is 5. That's 5. Oh, damn. Look at that. 5's just unwound themselves. Didn't have to do anything. Uh, 1, 2 and 8. This is a 1 or 8. That is a 2 or 8. Apparently it can't be 1. That's a 1 or 8. Oh. Oh, so I could have... No, the question I asked about 2 in that row, if I'd asked it about row 2, it would have been just as valid. I could have just written in the 2. I didn't see that. Um, so let's try 2s to see if we can do better. Oh. Oh no, maybe I can't actually. One, two, eight. That's a two or an eight. Two or eight. What are those? One, eights and nines, aren't they? One, eight, nine. That's not nine in the corner. Nine in the column has to be in here. So this is one or eight. One eight and nine. I've got lots of one eight and nine everywhere. Ah, that's eight or nine. Um, that's two eight or nine. I'm going to end up with everything pencil marked here. One two and nine, with that not being one. Yeah. Okay, so I've got in this column, I've got to place two, eight, and nine. The nine seems to have to be in one of those squares, so that's one or two. And that gives me a one, two pair. There we go. Nine goes here. Oh, you're kidding me. Hang on. That, that did not do anything. I got that digit from it and nothing else. Hang on. Um,. That was weird. That that actually felt like I must have made a mistake because that felt so awful. What's this digit? One, two, eight, or one. Oh, it's everything. No. Really? Uh Okay. That is not eight, because eight in row seven is definitely in this box. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, um, I don't think it does anything, but I can get rid of one from that square. But that that's very much more complicated than anything I've been doing so far. I'm sorry, I can't see this. Um, I, the way the way I get rid of one here is these squares. That is an X-wing on ones in rows two and eight. What do I mean by an X-wing of ones? Well, um, gosh, I haven't done this explanation for a long time. But if you ask where one goes in row two, it's in one of those squares. And if you ask where one goes in row eight it's in one of these squares now once you discover a pattern like that the crucial thing to note and this is something that people who who aren't familiar with x-wings don't realize the question you have to ask is not about the rows anymore it's about the columns that are common because what we have to ask is how many ones we're anticipating finding in this puzzle in column two and column eight and that sounds a facetious question, and it is a bit, but it, it brings home the point. In column two, there must only be one one. <laughs> Otherwise, there's a problem with the puzzle. And in column eight, there's only one one. So these columns together have how many ones in them? Two. There are two ones in these columns, but we've just said there are two ones in these green cells. So could you have, could this be a one? Of course not, because that would be a third one in these two columns. There's two ones in the green 
and we only need two ones in these two columns so that can't be a one I don't think it does anything but that's what I noticed um, can I color the eights and nines is that what I meant to do I'm just going to get rid of my x-wing coloring and see if that that's a propitious way to approach it green 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 oh no actually I don't like that anymore either Wow. <laughs> um, have I? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, let me think. What else could we do here? Anything? X-wing on twos. Sort of a two from that square. I might as well do it. Um, those squares, exactly the same question. Where's two in this row? Where's two in this row? And the answer is only in these squares. So again, we go to the columns. How many twos are we anticipating there being in column five and column nine? one two in each column so there are two twos but we know there are two twos in the green squares so that can't be a two or we've got a problem there <laughs> um there's definitely an eight in one of those oh, i'm so sorry i can't see this at all Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Um, this is like an old style cracking the cryptic video. I haven't done a video that's used these sorts of things for what feels to me like years. Right. Um, look at those three digits now. Now they, that is what I sometimes term a bent triple on one, two, and eight. If these were all in the same column, we would instantly be able to eliminate one, two, and eight from the rest of the column. Now, they are not in the same column, but they can still have an effect if you can spot them. Now, here, what I notice is if this is a one, this square is an eight. And if this is a two, this square is an eight. So one of these green squares is definitely an eight in the puzzle and both of these green squares look at that square so that can't be an eight another way to think about it would be to look at this digit but it's harder to, i think it's harder to spot this cell in isolation it's easier to see a bent triple and then ask what the effect is of the wings of the bent tipple bent bent tipple <laughs> what's a bent tipple but anyway you can see if this, if you do decide you want to make this an eight that will make this a one and this a two and now that square cannot exist in the puzzle so this is a two so this is an eight and that's probably going to finish it isn't it well i shouldn't have said that <laughs> i should oh no um, it might do yeah eight nine one eight two one yeah 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 here we go two one one two eight So we get left with a, yeah, this is fine now. We get left with a one nine pair, which we can, whoops, nine eight, nine eight, eight nine. Well, I'm, I feel a bit bad because I suspect I didn't need to go into that level of complication at the end there. Is it right? Yes, that is a sensational puzzle. Um, I'm, I apologize doesn't really matter but if there was a sort of naked single or something resolving that i didn't see it um and well the important thing the important thing is that i feel like we defeated the computer because the computer did well 
it definitely didn't just write five into that square, did it? It did some very peculiar things indeed. Uh, I, I hope maybe in the comments someone can explain what some of this is. And indeed, is it even relevant to this puzzle? Because I don't know how to tell. Um, but um, isn't it, yeah, isn't it, isn't it lovely to feel that human beings still have a role to play? And that's what I feel like today. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind and especially when they give Blashik an awful lot of praise for being a genius. See you next time on Cracking the Cryptic.